Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. I hope you're all doing well and ready for more VGC 2021 content here today. And we've got another rental team that we'll be featuring today. So I basically got a little notification earlier from me, Luca VGC, who is a Korean player. Um, he posted a team that he uh, got actually ranked number one on the battle spot ladder with um, earlier. So I don't know, he must have been playing this recently. I don't know if he hit the rank today day off that was just uh, a few, couple of days ago but very recent obviously and this is a team that he posted earlier on today obviously the rental code will be down in the description i'll make sure to uh, tag that and also uh, me lucas vgc's uh, social handle as well so you can drop him a follow as well and it is his birthday today so big big happy birthday to me lucas vgc here is the team that will be featuring today uh, it's very centric around the reggie drago obviously going to be the main centerpiece of the team or at least to me it is and that's what's really a attracting me to because i think reggie drago we did a, a, an episode on it i think it's a very strong pokemon but i do feel like it struggles a lot in this format but there's lots of nice pokemon around it to get rid of the pokemon that give it a lot of problems you've got nyligo something i haven't really featured too much on the channel this season so going to be nice to play that and also the, the tornadoes as well now the other three i can make an exception for because we've had teams with these pokemon in flurries throughout the last couple of weeks obviously the urshifu with the choice band there one of my favorite i items on Urshifu then Cartana with the Assault Vest I haven't really played the Assault Vest variant too much so that's going to be nice and interesting and then Incineroar with the Shuckerberry there reducing the damage from ground type attacks so that is the team um, and like I say big shout out to uh, to me you Luca for uh, posting the team and sharing it with the community very nice of him to do that and uh, obviously gives us the opportunity to kind of feature it today on the channel which is going to be very fun so we've got our first opponent of the episode they are playing a team of Robombi, Trevenant, Wigglytuff, Dusk Noir. Dusk Noir? Is that how we're saying it? I don't know. Stack Attacker and Guzzlord. Um, okay, this is uh, not your kind of standard looking team. You've got to imagine there's probably speed swap on the Robombi. I don't know why else it would be in there other than that kind of little gimmick that it's got going on uh, and plays well with the rest of the team. You know, you've got the Trick Room mode from the Dusk Noir, the Trevenant. That's what my guess in competitive on wigglytuff as well to kind of punish intimidate from ourselves and then the big hit as i don't know how hard guzzlord will hit um, but it's something not to be underestimated it is a bit of a tank if you don't have the uh fairy type ins to get around it and then stack attacker as well we all know how dangerous stack attacker can be um hmm. has the rabombi got has it got <laughs> the mental herb because potentially we could have we got taunt on tornadoes Let's have a quick look. We do. Because uh, we could taunt it. Um, I think as well. I'd like to lead Urshifu. Uh, that's definitely a Pokemon I would like to lead. Uh, Tornadus. The thing is... Um, Nihiligo is not a bad lead either here. Because it kind of helps check the, the Wigglytuff, you know? Um, also, Cortana isn't bad as well. I think we'll bring Drago and we'll bring Tornadus in the back as well. Okay, so... Let's see. I mean, Incineroar might have been an option here. It kind of gives us a little bit of <clears throat> an option if the Trick Room gets set up and gives us a little bit of a, a means to stall out the Trick Room turns, especially with the Intimidate, slowing down our opponent, Fake Out, things like that. But we haven't brought it, so we're going to have to manage without it in this one. Here we go. Those Moon Balls with the Dusk Noir and the um, Wigglytuff. Okay. Well... We can definitely remove uh, the the. I'm, I don't I don't really like saying that. I like saying Dusclops. Dusclops it rolls off the tongue, but Dusk Dusk Noir doesn't feel so good. And I'm, I might even be saying it wrong. The obvious thing here is obviously we go for the Wicked Blow into the Dusk Noir, um, and that would remove it. That takes away the the option for it to trick room unless it's sashed. And I feel like this team's got lots of little gimmicks on it. The thing is, though, we do have Nihiligo sitting here where we can reverse the Trick Room if we want and we could just get a Sludge Bomb into the, the Wigglytuff. Uh, Wigglytuff could potentially max. Or we could see that, which is not so good. Um, if we got the Poison here, that would be helpful. Not going to be very effective, though. Okay, we get the Poison. And a Wicked Blow is still going to do a bunch of damage to the Wigglytuff. Um, but we are going to have to readjust our board position here because now... Potentially a Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Wigglytuff. Definitely going to threaten our Urshifu. Um, <clears throat> and with the Trick Room set up as well, 
We're not in a great spot. Um, and obviously locked into Wicked Blow now. We are super vulnerable. So we'll we'll see if we can switch out. Maybe. I think Tornadus out of everything is probably the better thing to bring in here. Uh, the, the one Pokemon that I feel like we could maybe kind of sacrifice at this point out of everything else. Everything else that we've got on the field feels quite important. So... Um, <clears throat> and we do have the Sash there. So there's the Dazzling Gleam like we thought come out. We take that pretty comfortably on both Pokemon and the Poltergeist. Picks up our Mental Herb, which is... This is going to hurt. Oh, okay. Just hanging on to reverse that Trick Room, which is ideal. This is exactly what we need. Um, <clears throat> now, the problem is... Um, huh. Okay. I think what we'll do is we'll go for the Taunt into the Dust Noir. We'll go for a Meteor Beam this time because... Do we just go into the Dust Noir as well with a Meteor Beam? Because if we see the ally switch, we get the taunt onto that... No, we go after... Yeah, we go after the Wigglytuff. Because um, we want to get the taunt. Hopefully it hasn't got Mental Herb. No Mental Herb, but there's a Shadow Sneak. So we're going to lose... Uh, Nile go, but that's fine. We prevent. We're preventing the trick room, which is the big play here. Hyper voice coming out. We take some hefty damage from that. Um. Okay. Problem is, I kind of want to get like a close combat should take down the Wigglytuff, but we still have to contend with um. Yeah, heat wave not going to be not going to be the play here. And I don't think it's time for Reggie Drago just yet because um, Reggie Drago is not going to be able to damage that Wigglytuff. Um, we need to be able to remove the Wigglytuff really from the field. I mean, we could Tailwind here. And then if, yeah, if we Tailwind, I just worry about the ally switch. That's the only thing. Yeah, no ally switch. So I'm hoping a banded close combat ticks down the Wigglytuff. This will open the door then for Reggie Drago to come in and do a bunch of work. So there's the Shadow Sneak. That's fine. Um, yeah, the close combat. This should take the Wigglytuff down. Okay, perfect. We are locked into close combat, which isn't ideal. Um, and the poison just ticking away at that Dusk Noir. So what's going to come in? At least the Dustin is taunted for at least one more turn. And if in that turn Tornadus goes down, that's perfect. Because then we get Reggie Drago onto the field, which kind of opens the door for us to kind of start doing some big damage here. The other option is maybe... Hmm. Actually, we just want to go after. We just want to go after the stack attacker. Yeah, let's just go after the stacks. Because I think with the fairy down... Unless Robombi is the last Pokemon in my, my opponent's slot, then we should be fine. But if Robombi is the last Pokemon, then things get a bit tricky. We'll probably see a Shadow Sneak here from the Dusk Noir. I think into Tornadus just to remove it. It'd be a bonus if we don't see that. And we could potentially get a Heat Wave off. Okay. Well, we're going to see Stacker just retreat. Guzzlord coming in. Okay. Well, we don't mind this at all. Um, because... As long as Tornadus goes down here. What? No way. We're seeing... <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Didn't expect to see this. Dynamax Dust Noir. So this gets super interesting. Um, I would have never, ever, ever expected this. Now the thing is, if the Taunt wires off here, yeah, that's perfect for us. Because they're just not getting their Trick Room up. Um, and I think this pretty much locks the game for us. Because I don't expect us to lose Urshifu. I, or at least I hope we don't. Okay, well, there's the, the Guzzlord going down. I'm hoping they attack into Tornadus here. That's where I want them to go, but I don't think they will. I think they'll go after Urshifu. <clears throat> Max Knuckle coming out. It's going to take Urshifu down, I think. Yep. Oh, we actually survive. I'm surprised about that, to be honest, because um, the minus two... So, I know it is, like, Max Knuckles capped, but we're minus two defense. You know, there's a taunt wearing off there. 
The other oh, the other issue is obviously stack attacker coming in does have access to trick room. Um so it could go for that now. So it's probably worth our time actually not going for the heat wave and going for the taunt into the stack attacker and just following that up with a close combat. Because at this point now, as long as we can taunt the stack attacker, yeah, we've got Reggie Drago to come in and just kind of clean up after that. But we unfortunately get the win, but we don't actually get to see Reggie Drago, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the team showing it can kind of perform even without it's kind of it's star it's mascot it's me biggest member so um really kind of getting off to a nice start here here's my opponent's team shiny rabombi has it got the speed swap yeah there we go okay we've seen enough of the rest of the team but very good game to my opponent and uh, we will move on to our next game okay so next up we have got a team of venus otokol porygon 2 reggie aleki urshifu and glastria so we've got a definitive trick room core in this team you can see the Tokol and the Glastria, they're supported by the P2. It's going to be the, the Trick Room set. And then you've got the rest of the team in pretty speedy mode. You've got the Regieleki, which is going to cause us all sorts of issues. Um, then the Venusaur with the Chlorophyll ability, with that Drought ability on the Tokol, something that we need to think about and um, really try and mitigate if we can. And then the Urshifu, which kind of rounds up the team. So, uh, Incineroar, definitely a good Pokemon for us here to lead with, for sure. Um, do we want to go with Tornadus? It's a nice option because it gives us a way to shut down the P2 if we do see it. And it gives us a way to kind of mitigate the chlorophyll ability as well if we do see it from the uh, the Venus or Torkoal. Um, so it's a nice option. The only issue is obviously the uh, Regieleki is probably something that will lead. But then with the fake out support from Incineroar, we have a way of mitigating that at least. Uh, I do want to bring... Uh, Reggie Drago here, but I think also we probably need. Hmm, what do we need in our last slot? There's a lot of ground threats here, like Glastria carries ground threats, uh, Torkoal and Venusaur all do, but I do feel like Nihiligo could do a job for us here, uh, as long as the speed conditions are in our favor, because if we're in a trick room, obviously, with Nihiligo, it's not going to be great. But we do have the option to reverse the trick room if, if they do get it set up. I don't think we need to worry too much if, uh, as long as we can get a Tailwind up. Uh, if trick room's kind of avoided, that's that's a nice option there. Um, but we'll see what my opponent goes with to lead. And it is going to be the Regieleki and the Venusaur. And a nice play here for my opponent would always be going for the um, Volt Switch into... Tornadus, get us down to our sash, get the Torkoal in, and allow the Venusaur to attack before anything we can do anything really. Um, so we've got a couple of options here. We can go for a fake out into the Regieleki, but does my opponent read that? You see, and just switch straight into the Torkoal. Maybe go for a Sleep Powder here. Um, I think what we're going to do is go for a Flare Blitz. Read, read the hard switch from the, the Regieleki here, I think. Um, go for the Flare Blitz into the Venusaur. And get a Tailwind up as well. I think the Regieleki is too threatened here to stay in. Yeah. Oh. It's interesting. It's P2. Huh. Okay. I didn't expect that. Okay. But it's a nice play from my opponent. So. No hard switch from the Regieleki. We could have faked out that slot. And there's the Volt Switch. And I'd imagine Glastria may, may make an appearance onto the field. Now, what we're going to have to do is utilize Tornadus before um, the P2 can set the, the Trick Room up. Because that's the thing the P2 is going to definitely go for now. It's going to go for that, that Trick Room. Okay, and the Torkoal coming in. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, I think what we'll do is just allow... The Flare Blitz is going to do some nice damage to this P2 as well with the Sun Up. You know, that really helps us out a bunch. Um, but we know my my opponent's four Pokemon, uh, which is also very nice. The one thing we could potentially do is go for the Taunt and go for it, go for the Max with Incineroar, you know. Um, or is it worth just keeping it for later, maybe? Just I don't like to pull the trigger too early on the max. That's the thing. 
we could go i just want damage into the torque coil really and the only way to do it is to, to probably get damage into it is gonna be is gonna be going max darkness and then taunt into the p2 to stop that trick room worry about obviously an ally switch here which mitigates our taunt to a certain extent because they can get around this play and then set the trick room up the next turn the issue in doing that for my opponent would be though is that they would have a bit of an issue with the p2 taking too much damage meaning it's probably would be in ko range the next turn um but we ideally here what we want is to stop the trick room prevent that allow tornadoes to go down get reggie drago onto the field this next turn in our uh, in our tailwind and start just firing off uh, dragon energies because everything's kind of in range now for us to start chipping away at and the special defense drop as well on the incinero plays into this whole uh, idea now the eruption coming out which is ideal um because like i say it does take down the tornadoes which is what we want and incinero in a, a great position and now we should be able to actually see reggie drago in action which is what we really want and this is this is this works out then this is great um i think we just go for another max darkness um Maybe this time into... Do we go for a Max Flare? I think Max Flare into the P2. And we go for a Dragon Energy. Yeah. Because I think with the P2 not being able to recover, do anything, it feels like it may want to, to switch out. And we may see a play where my opponent keeps the Torque Hall on the field, protects it, and switches the P2 out to something but... Doesn't look like we're going to see that. There's a Dragon Energy. Can it take both down? That would be incredible if it can. Let's see. Bye-bye. <laughs> the field. It's just like the delete button. It's the best. It is the best. I mean, we're not going to get the most out of our max move now. But um, I'm hoping that I know, depending on how the opposing Reggie Lecky's trained, if it's modest, there's a chance that we could outspeed it with Reggie Drago. If it's not gonna be it's gonna be tricky we'll definitely outspeed the venusaur this turn and we can go for a max flare into that slot so that's fine um obviously we're not gonna outspeed it with incineral but we're not in any worry of getting knocked out here not by a max quake anyway so we'll go for another dragon energy we just need the jump on reggie Alecki, pretty much um because the max flare will take down the venusaur and the damage even if it stays on the field and protects will be enough to put it in range for the next turn, hopefully, with two Pokemon. We just need to take down this Regieleki here. So we're going to see Venusaur, I believe, in the Pokeball. Go for its G-Max. I don't think a Dragon Energy will take down a Venusaur, a G-Max Venusaur. I just can't see that happening. I mean, if it does, I mean, Regidrago, here we are. But we just need to outspeed the Regieleki, which I'm not... Oh, what? It actually outspeeds everything? Okay, it outspeeds our Drago. It doesn't do as much damage as we kind of... Okay. So, is that a slower Reggie Alecki? Dragon Energy should still do a good amount of damage. Okay, so we're still going to get a good chunk of damage. Yeah, and now the Max Flash should take down the Venusaur. Okay. Okay, underestimating how speedy this Venusaur is, but we make quick work of it and now Regilecki isn't going to be able to do very much to what we've got left on the field because we can just drag and pulse uh, to mitigate the HP loss uh, that we're kind of relying on for the dragon energy obviously one of those moves a bit like eruption a bit like water spout that you see on Kyogre where the more HP you've got the stronger the move is um, we'll just go for yeah a flubbets and a uh, dragon pulse and that should do the job but at least we got to see reggie drago in action here that's the main thing uh, as we see an electro ball come out from the reggie Lecky, we do resist that being dragon and the dragon pulse here gonna be enough to take down this reggie Lecky and wrap up this second game for us friends so that is that's a really nice uh, game for us to feature uh, along with our first one today especially with the reggie drago didn't feature too much in that first one so nice to get it here um and yeah that that is just shows the team and how well built it is and what a good team it is so we'll jump over to the rental code and we'll end the episode wrap up so here is the rental code my friends and once again just a big 
shout out to me luca vgc and a big happy birthday to you as well hope you've had a great day and i hope if you guys try this team out i would definitely recommend it it's a very very nice build and the reggie drago is not something to overlook it's a very powerful pokemon in the right conditions you've got to be very careful if you're going up against fairy types of course they're immune and you've got no coverage here with reggie drago it's one of the biggest drawbacks of it as a pokemon in general so what you want to be doing in situations where you're seeing fairies in front of you is making sure that they are the priority to take down that's your win condition once the fairies have gone down you've got a game plan where potentially tornadoes reggie drago in the back and you can bring it in, in the end game and just really just obliterate your opponent and just overwhelm them with the, the speed control that you've got from tornadoes and then that dragon energy boosted by the dragon fan, fang as well as well as dragon's maw which is just incredibly strong damage and um that's the that's the end game it's a bit like translating it to those older players that maybe you're not some familiar with this format if you're playing ferrothorn the win con is get rid of the fire type and then ferrothorn just wins out because you know it's just such a good pokemon Reggie Drago is a little bit different. It needs a bit of additional support in that speed control. So as long as you've got that next to it, you're going to be fine. But the rest of the team does an incredible job at dealing with the issues that Reggie Drago sometimes struggles with. You've got two Ultra Beasts here, which deal with fairies like it's nothing. You've got Incineroar, which is a more offensive build, which is really nice. And then Urshifu, which is just bust in this format. So it's a really nice team. And I'm really, really thankful that... Uh, we got this share as well so big shout out again and uh, we'll wrap things up there if you have enjoyed today's episode please take a moment and hit that like button down below it does really help the the video out and uh, lets people know about it a bit more because youtube decides that it's going to push it so it does help out and if you have enjoyed the content as well and you're not already subscribed to the channel do consider subscribing hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss any of these episodes when they do go live so friends thank you so much for tuning in have a great rest of your day i really appreciate you coming and enjoying the episode and the team with me and we'll see you for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye